This news update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy. He's here. Welcome to the Bobby This Today Evening Update for Friday, June 12th. I'm Fernanda Wedderburn. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news this evening, transport authorities are considering new laws to cut out profiteering among privately owned public service vehicles. Transport Minister Michael Lashley revealed during a tour of the River Van stand today that he is looking at restricting the transfer period for PSV permits. He made the comments on the hills of Tuesday's tragic accident in which ZR125 overturned near the van stand, injuring over 20 passengers, including 14-year-old Zakaya De Freitas, whose left arm had to be amputated by doctors. He believes that such limitations will eliminate persons who don't have a genuine interest in the sector. The minister is also expressing some level of dissatisfaction with the enforcement of law and the hesitancy by members of the public to report infringements by PSV drivers and conductors. And the issue is enforcement. And I'm saying that if there's a problem with the police doing it, we have the mirror area legislation, similar to the Jamaica legislation, where the transport inspectors that have similar powers and have powers that they can initiate prosecution. That is how we have to do it. The other issue that we have to face is um, whether there, there are about a lot of cases relative to traffic cases. Yes, there's a traffic court there, but we might, we might, this, this is a national issue. And we might have to reach a stage where we look at another magistrate or another judicial officer to sit in, a, in another court so that we can track uh, some of these, these, these matters and have them um, access to the benefit of the person who's accused and also the Minister Lashley, who was accompanied by architect Stanton Haynes, also visited the old Queen's College School building nearby, where cleanup work has started to make way for a $2.5 million renovation project. That building is being transformed into a modern PSV terminal and concourse, similar to that of Fairchild Street bus terminal. Architect Haynes noted that the main objective of having the terminal in place is for the safety of passengers. The intention is that we are going to turn the, the, the buses around. Right now the buses are entering in this direction, parking here and picking up people at that end of the facility and exiting in that direction. What we're going to do is make nursery drive this road along there. We're going to make nursery drive one direction where the, the, um, the buses will come in, drop passengers off at that end and collect at this end and leave in that direction. Uh, the uh, proposal is that this will be part of the waiting area. The existing slab you see here will be covered so that people will be able to walk and stand out of the rain and the sun. And we are going to extend across there a new extension to the facility where they will be catching the buses. And over there will be the concourse where you will they will pick up their buses and they will leave from here. The number one issue here with this is that we want passengers to be safe and to catch the buses in a safe environment. If you see over there now, when you go to catch a bus, you have to maneuver between the buses and what happens. The private sector association says it is yet to get official notification on the action being taken by customs workers, but is calling on those involved to settle the matter urgently. The staff at the Customs and Excise Department are said to be on a go slow over the planned transition to the Barbados Revenue Authority which has resulted in a backlog at the island sport. Just yesterday, the National Union of Public Workers served notice that a number of its members had made it clear that they would not be making the move later this year. But BPSA Chairman Alex McDonald says while the association will not be getting into the matter between employee and employer, a quick resolution must be made in the best interests of the country. 
a quick and rapid re um, res res resolution to, to this is an important thing. We know that these things take time. Um, we, we often have to face it in our own businesses. But what we can say is that there are some areas that are very, very critical to the future uh, de development of, of our nation. And the movement of goods and product products through the, the port is one of those. Most importantly for the movement of, of products and services out of the, of the port to outside, to back to be an, an, an exported product. That is what is going to save our island. And if we can't get it right now, and quick, quick, quickly, it will surely tarnish the image that we have. Murder accused Gordon Manfield Redmond has been remanded to prison until July 10th after appearing in the District A Magistrates Court today. The 47-year-old of Lightfoot Lane, Crossroads, St. Michael, is accused of striking Wilfred Patrick Edwards of Chapman Street, St. Michael, with an object on May 12th while they were at Green Park Lane in St. Michael. Edwards received a medical treatment and returned home, but he later died on May 28. Fisher folk in Western St. James have been remembering the life of Leroy Mac William Thompson, who lost his life yesterday after being hit by a speedboat. His family was too distraught to speak about the tragic accident, which occurred in an area known as Reeds Bay of Western around quarter to 11 in the morning. Some of the 64-year-old's friends tells Barbados today that he was an avid fisherman who will be greatly missed. One day you see a man next to you going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like going to do every like, you like fishing. See his eating, see his eating. See what? See what? Huh? You think he was Frank? Frank. Tell you if you got to say, it, tell you, tell you. Don't yeah, care if you go. get vets or not. Mm -hmm. Huh? He like any day you are, you are he's still pretty good. Kind of like a shot in next day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Fast, speed, dirty body. Where we been? So you say you, how you found out about the news? Actually, I don't come and swim in. My son called me, asked me if I hear it, a, a guy get hit with a boat. And, and asked me if I hear anything. He said, you ain't hearing us yet. I come and check. The boy ain't hearing nothing. And then next 15, 20 minutes to the house. You come around? Again, he was like, yeah, we got struck the boat. Same morning. Can I show me? All right. No, I ain't room. What? Maybe I'll wait for you. There's regional and international news after this short break. Secure your future, be financially strong. Since 1983, we have been there for you. A smart range of products, great tax benefits. We're the solution to your hopes and your dreams. The Barbados Workers Union Cooperative Credit Union. The Barbados Workers Union Cooperative Credit Union. On the regional scene, the people of Trinidad and Tobago will elect a new government in three months' time. Prime Minister Kamala Pusad Bisesa told Parliament today that the much-anticipated poll will be held on September 7. A request will be sent to President Anthony Kamona to dissolve the Parliament on June 17. Mr. Speaker, the People's Partnership Government is ready to return to the voters of Trinidad and Tobago. We are ready because we are proud of our record of achievement. We are ready because of the promises that we have kept to the voters of this country. And so, Mr. Speaker, I wish to advise that general elections in Trinidad and Tobago will be held on Monday, 7 September 2015. And finally, an unprecedented move in the United States as California lawmakers order farmers to reduce their water consumption. Officials today announced that some 100 water rights holders would be told to stop pumping from three separate waterways. This is the first time in decades that officials have forced thousands of farmers to draw back on water use. These farmers' rights to water were decided more than 100 years ago.
And on that note, we come to the end of our Barbados Today evening updates, but we'll be back again first thing Monday morning. Until then, do remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. We're also on Channel 101 on Line TV and Mix 96.9 FM. There you can get all the latest news and sports. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Please have a fantastic weekend and do it safely. <laughs>